We got a recipe to bring in the new year right. Black eyed pea soup, a southern tradition. Oh, I do love me some black-eyed peas, they are what's happening. And today we are going to make what? A black-eyed pea soup. That is oh so good, it will warm you up. And look, we have guests in camp, we do. It is good to see Whiskey and Zoe again. Yes. <laughs> we have all kinds of guest critters in camp today, we do. But what are they coming for? To wish y'all all a happy new year, like I said. And let's talk about black-eyed peas. It's also known sometimes from my good friend down there, Tony in Ruston, Louisiana, as purple, purple hole peas, purple eye peas. So folks, them's just dried black-eyed peas they are. Now, my dad used to tell me a long time ago, they didn't get a lot of rain to begin with, and them have like 20, 30 acres of them peas out there. And sometimes they even call them cow peas because the cows did get fat on them things they did. But they'd go to drought and out, wouldn't get no rain, and they'd just make a little old pod there and wouldn't have many black eyed peas in them. So they'd just let them dry on the vine. And then they'd just pick them later on that fall when they's dried out. And they'd put them in a bucket, put them in a barrel, put them anywhere. He said he can remember at one time they had 25 gallons of black-eyed peas that were dried. I, I just want you to know, they're like hard. I mean, you, they are hard, hard. So I'm gonna soak them, and that's what I recommend y'all doing. We're gonna cut down on the cooking time. So just pour them in there and just put you enough cold water on them that they're covered. And we're gonna let them soak for about an hour, we are, and that's gonna help them get done a whole lot quicker. Speaking of New Year's and New Year's traditions, now if you'll look back, we did a collard green and black eyed pea soup a long time ago, which had ham and collard greens in it cause the green is supposed to be for wealth. And then the peas here are for good luck. Yes, they are, so you combine them both. Now, we're not having green today because I've got $2 in my pocket, so I figure wealth, I have got that covered, I do. And leave us a comment of what your New Year's tradition is food-wise. Is it black-eyed peas? Is it turnip greens? Is it something totally different? Now, these have soaked long enough. I'm not even gonna go get the colander. I'm just gonna do it right here in the kitchen floor. So make sure that you don't do this in the house. And I'm telling you right now, the reason them gloves is on it is about 39 and the wind is blowing as you can see old glory there and my hands is cold so they've all had a bath they have now to make this and we're using two pounds of beans this is going to beans this is not beans they are black eyed peas two pounds of them is going to feed i figure you were going to get a good 10 maybe 11 servings out of it. it just depends on how big your people are your serving so get them dumped in there Let's go ahead and break because I didn't get all my stuff up here, okay? <laughs> get all your stuff? Well, I don't know, you never know. <laughs> you know, that's, a lot of people, when they're cooking at home, it's like it's just right here in this cabinet or maybe in this cabinet. Sometimes my cabinet might be a quarter mile away or if I forget it, it could be 20 miles away. We're not just gonna add straight water to that, we aren't. Now, I've used chicken broth and I've used beef broth, but today we're going for beef. And how much? 32 ounce whole box full. We are. Just go ahead and get them in there. You can see that is covered, but that's not enough, folks, as these cook. So we're going to add probably about two cups worth anyway, right off the bat. Now, to that, let's just set this aside here for just a second. And let's go ahead and I want you to get a yellow onion. Now, a yellow onion is always going to be a little sweeter, and I'm after a little something sweeter in here. But most traditional Mexican food recipes that I'm going to cook are always going to be a white onion. So let's get the onion back in them black eyed peas. And a lot of you be thinking to yourself right now, he ain't going to put no smoked jowl in there or maybe some ham hock or anything like that. Hang on folks, don't quit me yet because we got a lot of goodness going on here. Two cans of green chili, uh-huh. Gotta have them. Diced? Diced green chilies, yes. And 
you can get them mild or hot, whatever your flavor will be to that. Look here, you know him. As Justin Wilson would say, Lee and Perrin's the W sauce. Mm-hmm, you gotta have it in there. So we're gonna put about yay much in there. We are. I like a little liquid smoke in this recipe, I do. And how much does it take? Exactly one cap full. So oh, I can smell that from here. Yes, ma'am. Then this is what? The mesquite flavor. We're gonna start with this knife because we don't have a spoon over here and get it mixed up. And I'm gonna meet y'all over there to the fire. Y'all might be wondering why I'm over here huddled up again in the wagon. I'm telling you folks, y'all are sitting in there, most of you in the recliner while I'm doing this, and it is cold, I'm telling you for sure. Now, the reason I hadn't got this on a berth over to where I can get some more heat, there is a lot of dry grass up here and one spark and we'd set the world on fire, so we have broke out the propane stove we have. So we got it on medium high heat, we do. Now, I'm going to add some mesquite seasoning right off the bat. Some cumin, too, to that. Garlic powder, coarse ground black pepper, and something that I don't have with me, which is over yonder. Shocking! <laughs> Not in that drawer. <laughs> One of my most secret and prized ingredients it is whole oregano. Now you can buy that stuff that is crushed up and fine like powder, but folks, you ain't never gonna get the flavor that you're gonna get out of this. And I measure this in a pinch, which is just like that right there. Now I don't want you to just drop it down in there. I want you to just sort of crumble it between them fingers and that thumb till you get it all in there really well. Spoon, give it a good stir. Now remember, this is like beans too. So I need you to keep some hot water on a burner somewhere if you have to add some because black eyed peas too can get thirsty later on. We're gonna give that a good stirring and folks, we're gonna keep it on that medium high heat with a lid on it, but we need to let that simmer about 30 minutes before anything else goes in there. Meanwhile, we gotta put something in there that's gonna give it some what, some substance, so we gotta brown up some meat. First, we then browned us up some sausage. We have one pound of sausage. Took it out and we got a pound of ground beef here and you can put it in however you want to. In fact, we're just gonna put it in there just like that. Jump to, get you a spatula. And folks, if you ain't got one of these and you got some cast iron, they're probably the best thing ever mud. And if you get lucky, maybe you get one like I got that's got that yellow piece of mesquite in it as well. So get that chopped up just a little. We didn't season the sausage any when it was cooking because sausage already has seasoning in it, it does. But for the ground beef, we're gonna add a little original to it. So give it a good little shake here. And while we have got to that point, my grandmother used to put what in her black eyed peas long time ago, molasses. Sometimes even syrup, like maple syrup. Me, I like a little brown sugar in some black eyed pea soup. And it ain't got much, folks. I'm talking like a tablespoon full is all it's gonna take. That'll sweeten it up? Yes, you'll find out when you get a bite, it'll be just right. It's gonna give it some really good color too. Well, you can see that is nearly plum brown and folks, it don't take much. I'd say about two tablespoons of flour in here for a pound of ground beef. I just wanna make sure that we get all that good meat grease that's cooked out of it and get to keep it too. But like I say, it's gonna help thicken up Wait, our did soup. You, did you drain the grease? No, no, no. Oh. No, there's no no drain in here. We wanna, wanna get that to where we got everybody got a little bad with that flour on there. Well, hamburger meat is browned up. <clears throat> in fact, we're just gonna go ahead and put the sausage back in there now. To that, we're gonna go ahead and add this hamburger meat. Now we have what we call some beef and some pork in there. So give this a stir. And you can see this is gonna be a pop full of goodness. It is. To that <clears throat> skillet, add you some butter. I have diced me up four Roma tomatoes. Shan was asking, why don't you just put them right in the pot? Because to me, folks, we're gonna get so much more flavor out of them tomatoes with this little dab of meat grease that's over here and that butter. It don't take long for this to happen. 
when that butter is what you call pretty well melted and them tomatoes are begin just to soften and brown just a little, let's go ahead and put them in that black eyed pea soup. We're gonna bring that back up to what I would call sort of a low boil and let it go for about 45 minutes. That is the best way to bring in the new year. I'm talking, man, Ooh, it is looking so good. I'm gonna let it cool off just a minute while we talk to you about it, but I wanna ask you a question. Cornbread or crackers? Or do you even crumble your cornbread up and put it in there? Or do you dunk it and take a bite? Or do you slice it and pour the whole thing over? Only so you options. will know, and it is so many options, it is. Mm. Make me want to do, you know, that little horn they used to give you at New Year's and you blow it. <coughs> Mine ain't got no sound on <coughs> But I'm going to do the New Year's dance because I'm so happy to be alive and be cooking on New Year's. Woo! It is the best way to start. It is. Fix you some cornbread. Mm. Get the whole bunch of you in there and bring them together. Now, I'm going to tell you, there is folks in our part of the family. And it is that grandson, Caden, that you have seen in the deer hunting video, but also what the breakfast burrito challenge that does not like black eyed peas. But I have seen his daddy ever since he was a little feller make him take a bite of black eyed peas. So even if you have one that is skeptical, just go ahead, blindfold them, hold their nose, run it on in there and let them have it because everybody do need some black eyed pea. It is an honor for me and Shan to be able to start a new year with y'all. Uh, a lot has happened in the year uh, behind us, but folks, we're just looking across the horizon, just as you would look up that hill right up yonder, and we're just thanking God for all the blessings that are coming in this year. We hope that each and every one of you has the best new year you can, but you know where it starts? Right here in your heart. That's what you gotta have. You gotta put heart into it. You gotta put soul in it. Be glad you got every day because it is a great day above the grass. It is, as always, and it is with great honor, pride, and privilege that I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag flying from the years before to the years ahead. We bless y'all, we do. Rest of you, come on in here, come on. I missed you last week because my heart was still a little sore and I couldn't hug you, but come on in here. I'm gonna give you a great old big mm. God bless you each and every one. Happy New Year to you and I'll see you down the Black Eyed Pea Soup Trail. That's a very bad clap. <laughs> in in uh, gloves. Well, I have my gloves on, my hands are cold. It's okay, hey, do a little, like, do it on the... I don't trust y'all, not one bit, cause y'all sort of like to be. Y'all would eat everything I got in like one bite. Well, our onion is- You lost your gloves. Yeah, it was us having to do knife work and hold an onion and things was happening and now my hands are just gonna have frostbite. I am warming my paws. Just like an old cow, I need my paws warm before I can work. Are you cold, Shin? I am. I am too. Your little nose is cold. I can tell by looking at it. It's past time for Rudolph. It's what you call frostbite now. It is. Uh-huh.